What's going on, everybody? Well, today is the day. Today is the ESC 70 day. So, guinea pig's gonna be the ecto. Um, this is gonna be interesting. First time shooting from the other side of the camera, but I got a package. Um, a couple weeks ago, I got the opportunity to get my hands on an ESC 70 from a certain somebody. Um, I haven't messed with it. I just pulled it out to see what all came with it. Um, haven't hooked up power to it. Haven't done anything. So, page shaping got the ESC 70 that uh, that particular YouTuber out west had all kinds of problems with and could not get to work. Um, and I've said from day one that I'd like to get my hands on it to see if I could get it to work. To see if it was user error or if it is actually in fact a junk ESC. So that is what we're going to do today. Um, it looks like everything is as it should be here. So what we're going to do is first get rid of all this trash here. So I'm going to hook this thing up put some power to it and then I'm going to run through the programming uh, through the Bluetooth app and uh, see what kind of a setup uh, he had going on here and then I will run through and set it up how I set all of my ESC 70s up and see if it works Okay, I got my other camera out and got it switched out here, so I can try to go ahead and do this multi-angle situation. So, let's see here. Get the... Uh, Luckily, I've got wire extensions on everything. Uh, it's going to the receiver box here, so I don't have to tear into anything too awful far. Get this hooked up. Um, we will go ahead and leave the motor leads unplugged for the time being until I get everything uh, programmed luckily I will say he had a JST soldered on here which is cool because I got a direct power servo so I don't have to solder anything on here big bonus okay and then after we get everything programmed then I'll mount the ESC and everything more securely before we go do a test run okay hopefully this will all work out here so turn the radio on plug the ESC in get my phone out Pull up the ISD app, turn that on, okay, so, I don't know how easy this is going to be to see on here, so what we've got here 
it's not going to arm the system which doesn't really matter right now because uh, the throttle uh, position is bouncing around so we can go ahead and fix that go into trim throttle this is going to be really hard to get everything in one shot here okay that's the wrong way okay so we've got the throttle trimmed out to where it's registering zero percent throttle now everything is armed it's all good to go so now we'll go into settings so the only downside to this whole situation here is I don't there's no way that this is how he had it set up so I don't know if it reset itself or what but we'll go ahead and go through all of this here Okay, so I may end up having to move to a different spot. So I have got not great reception here. Let's see if I can change anything else while we're out here in the barn. Normally I do this in the garage, but it's kind of loud in there at the moment. So, yeah, just forward and reverse, battery type, 3 cell, cut off, voltage is fine. Don't know the motor rotation at the moment, so that should all be good. Yeah, I'm, I might have to go to the garage where I got better signal. Well, that one's set. Okay, go to advanced settings. Um, this one here, sometimes I run them at 12, sometimes at 16. Start force, I usually put at 9. Brake force, go 8. Okay, so this is where most people end up having issues. Um, sometimes you can get away with it, sometimes you can't. But you've got active drag brake and active brake. And it seems like most of the time, if both of these are enabled at the same time, that's when you'll get that glitchy, twitchy kind of a thing going on. So, go ahead and disable that. Set that at a 12 for now. I can't remember exactly what I had the last one set up on the Ecto. Um, the drag brake kind of changes depending on gearing and everything that you got. Um, if you set it too high, then it it just gets ridiculous sometimes. A drag brake on this ESC uh, with a decent motor gets gets really good. Okay, so this is the problem that I have every now and again. If you don't have good signal, like I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, like I probably couldn't even send a text out here with the signal that I've got. It, you wouldn't figure that that would make a difference, but with all of the ESCs that I've programmed on here, it definitely makes a difference. I think I had that at 9. And then I disabled that. Put that on a 12 just for now.
I'm really trying to do this without having to move to a different spot, but I may end up having to move just to show everything working. So it's timing out. So I'll go ahead and move to a different spot where I got better service and uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're outside now. So this may be horrible for reflections, but we're gonna try to go through this again. I should have a better signal out here. So I'm just gonna go through and reset all of this to where I tried to set it inside. Disable that. Turn this up to 12. And then something that I don't particularly understand is they double up on the uh, options here. So after the active drag brake, you scroll down and it just goes back to the pulse width frequency. So that's all you got to set up there. And now that we've got better signal, it's set successfully. Um, let's see, we'll, uh, I've got so many of these, it's nice to go ahead and put names on them. Although one thing that, uh, is kind of annoying, I guess, that some people may not be able to get over seems like every now and again if you set up too many things at once it doesn't like it which it's a budget cheap ESC some things you just got to kind of deal with so we'll go back and I like to set up a pretty soft throttle curve which is one thing that I don't understand how that guy could not figure out. This is, this line here is your input and this line here is your output. So for my dot here, I usually like to go about 50% input is about 25% output. So I just grab it and kind of move it down to that general area there. And it's completely, you know, opposite corner. So over here for reverse. So I'll just drag this up to about the same spot. Hopefully you can see that there. My screen on the camera went dark. So I'm, hopefully you can see that there. But that is the throttle curve that I put on everything. So we'll go ahead and try to send that to the ESC. successful um, the brake curve doesn't apply to the crawler since we have instant reverse so that's no need to even go in there something else that I do if it'll let me here the start music on this is very annoying so you can go in here and just delete it I, they don't give you any kind of a reference on what the numbers equal as far as tones but um, let's see just a whole bunch of zeros I can't remember exactly how many digits you have to put in there as a minimum but I usually fill out the whole first line of it. Okay. So once you get that there, hit OK. And as long as that saves correctly, what that'll do is it'll get rid of all the annoying startup music. And it timed out. 
which probably still don't have the greatest service out here but it is what it is but anyways instead of having there we go it set that time so instead of having the weird goofy music at the beginning when you first turn it on now it'll just give you the three time the three chimes for the three cell count and then one more chime to say that it's been activated so that should be everything we need to get started here okay since we're done with the programming part i figured i'd come back in here and kind of clean up some of the wiring here a little bit um, i will have to go down to the garage and uh, get the zip ties out to really keep the wires under control before the test run but I at least wanted to give this thing a little bit of a back and forth on the bench here just to show you whether things are working or not I haven't tried it yet but everything is armed Get my servo plugged in. Probably should have turned that off before I plug my servo in. So, servo's plugged in. I did get my motor rotation right, so that's a plus. Everything seems to be working. So, yeah, I've at least got it working now. Um, I'm going to go down to the garage. I will get some wires zip tied back up out of the way so they don't get drug around on the drive shaft and whatnot. And then we will head on up to one of the rock piles and we'll give this thing a crawl around and see if it has any of the disarming issues or anything like that that uh, the previous operator was having issues with um, like I said I, I don't know if those were actually the parameters that he had set up on it or not I may have to go back and check his video out again because it's been a while since I've seen it um, if those weren't his parameters then I may go back and I will put the parameters in there that he did maybe I don't know I, that may just be pointless I just know that if I set it up how I set all mine up they all seem to work so I've got this one set up how I set my stuff up seems to be working so far we'll go for a crawl and if everything continues to work then well, sweet, I just got an $8 ESC and proved my point yet again about the world's worst budget ESC, according to some people. So, yep, I'll get these wires cleaned up, we'll go for a crawl. Okay, we're up here in the pit. Um got all the wires and everything somewhat taken care of uh, but I did end up making a couple more changes um, I'll go through a screenshot uh, I don't have my other camera with me but I'll go through a screenshot and show you what I'm talking about uh, just so you can see the whole parameter layout um, this one is a little bit different uh, than the other ones that I have set up the what is it the active drag brake setting 
and the active brake setting I had to switch um, normally I run the active drag brake but on this one it didn't like it it was doing the jittery thing so I had to disable the active drag brake and then I turned the active brake on and then I set the brake force up to nine and I think I went ahead and turned the uh, pulse frequency setting up to 16 that way it's a little bit quieter um, but that's all I've changed and everything seems to be just fine so I'll run through the screenshot now and show you all the parameters and uh, then we'll get to crawling and and it probably doesn't mean a whole lot to anybody here at the moment Hold on, plug this in. but I'll show you what I'm talking about here um, I've started swapping everything over to XT60s from the XT90s and all of my plugs are these black ones and I always write positive and negative on them while I'm soldering so I don't get them mixed up this is still the ESC 70 that came from the Canyon still got the yellow plug on it so I didn't swap them out for one of my other ones this is still the same one so I've got that plugged in now I'll go ahead and turn my radio on and you'll hear that there's no goofy startup music um, I've just got it down to where it's just the three beeps indicating it's a three cell lipo. So, all right, um, I'll run through the uh, parameters in the Bluetooth app and chuck this body on and we'll go for a run around the pit and see how this absolutely junk ESC that isn't worth a dollar does. here we go ESC 70 from the canyon now, the only thing that I will say about the uh, low speed control on here right now is after the last couple events that I went to I had jumped up uh, more than a few teeth on the pinion gear um, just because there was a lot more trailing than crawling going on. So I've got this thing not set up for crawling at the moment, but even still, I, I very much prefer this ESC over a 1080. So, uh, it's been a while since I've driven uh, a drag axle rig, or brushed for that matter. I've been doing so much uh, like four wheel steer capra stuff here lately that uh, it's going to take me a minute to get used to driving one of these again.
ruptures are a little bit bigger than the tires I've been running on here apparently. That was a, quite a bit of body noise there. Most of the time when you get the real jittery situation going on from this ESC, it's when you back off of the throttle really fast, like hammer down and let off immediately. Um, so we'll give that a shot here and see if it does it. Nope. 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 Tire in the air over there. Can't be having that. Oh, buddy. That tire's way up there on the driver's side. There we go. This is the first time I've run the ruptures on the Ecto, so this is a whole new, uh, whole new experience on that front. will say that I have put the uh, my own concocted uh, dual stage foams in here I just finished that up this morning before I started messing around with the ESC so uh, we'll see see what the ruptures got with the dual stage foams here on hard line down there you go I think I backed up too far. Woo! Look at that. Hopefully that was all in frame.
Ecto on ruptures with the Canyons Junk ESC 70. Just pulled hard line. Shit, I did it again. It's been a really long time since I tried this climb with a drag axle. I've run it a few times with the four wheel steers here lately and I uh, approach it a heck of a lot different with those, that's for sure. So it's been quite a while since I've driven a straight axle apparently. I forgot where my line was on the tree for a straight axle.
I don't know if this kind of stuff bothers anybody else, but anytime I get leaves and sticks and everything wrapped around my axles and whatnot, I just can't help but to stop and pick it all out. I get hemmed up on there. Yeah, I don't know what else to really say about the uh, ESC-70 here other than it's working just fine for me. Um, and I'm sure that I've said it before and I'll go ahead and say it again just in case anybody's taken anything the wrong way here. Um, there's a lot of things that that guy does that I really appreciate um, he does a lot of pretty sweet custom builds um, his double bun foam setup I've tried that a couple times and it works really well um, his course building freaking amazing the big issue I have isn't the fact that he doesn't like something that I do everybody's entitled to their own opinion the problem I have is that this guy has got a pretty large following and there are a lot of people especially a lot of newer people to the hobby that you know would take his word for gospel and could potentially miss out on a really good budget ESC just because he doesn't like it I mean there's things that this will do that others won't do that I really appreciate it like being able to program your own throttle curve you can't do that with hobby wing and until I got this fly sky that was my only option is either the ESC 70 or spend a lot of money and get a castle so uh, that's just that's been my my main gripe about the whole situation is we can 
completely talks it down like it's a worthless piece of garbage when yeah it may take a little bit more to set up but once you get it set up it's freaking awesome and for $25 you can't beat it you can't get this kind of programmability for $25 anywhere else so that was the big issue I had and that's why I wanted to get my hands on this particular ESC um, because I could go through a dozen other ones and say how good they are and everything and that argument would always be there that oh well that wasn't the one that he had you know that one he had was junk or something along those lines well this is the exact one that he had it came straight from him and i mean there's there's nothing wrong with it it's it's an awesome esc i mean we'll get it up here i'll take the lid off um i don't have a temperature gun or anything but you'll just have to take my word for it just like everything else i guess um so far the only thing that i see that's different from you know between this one and all the other ones that i run is uh the drag brake or the active drag brake and the active brake situation um it seems to be backwards on this one for some reason but motor's not even warm ESC is not even warm. That servo is obviously not warm. That, one, that thing's awesome. And battery's cold. So, yeah. I don't know what more I can say. Um, definitely glad that I was able to get my hands on this, this ESC here. Just to kind of prove my point a little bit. Um, that these are good ESCs and I understand that some people have issues with them. I've got issues with other ESCs, but nevertheless, I'm not gonna, you know, go out of my way to tell somebody that something's garbage just because I don't understand how to operate it. This was very obviously operator issue or operator error because I took it straight out of the package, programmed it in less than three minutes, and I, I just ran all the way around the gravel pit here. Zero issues, zero jitters. It didn't disconnect. It didn't lose calibration, you know. Pretty much everything that he had issues with I it's got to be in the programming or the, the parameters that he set up or something it works here in Ohio and that was the best eight dollars I've spent in a long time so I'm going to continue to use this ESC and enjoy it because it works great so but anyways uh hope you enjoyed i hope maybe i get to open at least one person's eyes to the fact that uh these are in fact good budget escs and they're worth a shot so but anyways um if there's anything else that anybody wants to know specifically about the esc 70 or 90 uh, i've got one of those two as well um so yeah got any questions or want to see something on video just give me a shout i'll be more than happy to show off what i got
But till the next time, I hope y'all have a good one. And we'll catch you in the next one. Later.